So next, we're going to be discussing some formulas that go along with the time value of money. So I've written out all the variables that you'll traditionally see um, in your lab manuals, your tests, and your midterm exams. So present value, essentially that's how much money you have today in the present. So basically, if I pull out a $100 note, the present value of how much I have is $100. I have it, I can see it in front of myself. Easy. The next part is the future value of money, which is a bit more complicated and follows this formula, which I will explain in a minute. Future value is essentially how much money you can potentially have any number of years, like you could have from one day from now, one year from now, a hundred years from now. In the previous example, the one I discussed in the last video, we showed that the future value of money was actually $110, as in you had $100 with you today, and after one year, you actually had $110. So the future, in the future, you had $110, so the future value was $110. Next, the interest rate. As in the previous example, I just made up a rate to demonstrate a point, which was 10%. Um, and that's the amount of interest you earn, let's say, if you give your money to a bank and they keep compounding the interest on the money that you deposited. Um, in the previous example, I just assumed 10%. Um, usually, for your lab manual questions, your midterms and exams, this value will be given to you. And the final one is the number of periods. So basically this refers to how many times your money is compounded. So in the previous example, I said 10%. That essentially means that if you deposit your money in a bank, every year per annum, they will add 10% to the money that you already have in your account. And then we finally get to this equation, which is extremely important for tackling all time value of money problems and future annuity problems, which I will discuss in a future video. So, Essentially, you have your present value. I'll start off with the right side of the equation. You have your present value. Let's say we have $100. Now, you need to add interest onto it, which is basically 10%. So let's say you take out your money one year from now. How much are you going to have? From the previous video, we know that we'll have $110 if the interest rate is 10%. So basically, you get $100 plus 10% of $100. Makes sense. At the same time, for the present value formula, you have to write that as 1 plus i, and I'll show you why. So basically, $100 plus 10% of $100 can be written as $100 plus 10% of 100 can be written as 0 0.1 times 100. Makes sense? And now, doing some basic mathematical manipulation, if you factor out 100 from both these terms, you get 100, 1 plus 0 0.1. At this point, if you're confused, I would urge you to pause the video and sort of assess this to make sure that you really do understand the concept being applied here. So now, you have $100, which is your present value, times 1 plus 0 0.1. Over here, we have 1 plus i. So that essentially means that i, which was 10%, is over here. Makes sense. And the last part of the equation is n, which is basically the number of periods. Remember that I said that the interest rate that we were talking about is 10% annually. annually. What that basically means is, like I explained before, your money is compounded at the end of every year. And 10% in the equation is written as 0 0.1. <clears throat> so, since your money is only compounded once, you put your money into the bank, you wait one year, they compound the money once, and then you take your money out. You only did it once. The period of time that you spent, the period of time your money spent in the bank was one. So we all raise this to the exponent of 1. Now consider a different scenario. Let's say you left your money in the bank for two years. Everything stayed the same, but you left your money for two years. Then this would turn to a 2. Because you left your money, at the end of first year, your money grew to $110. And then you have another year. So now you have $110 in your bank account, and it gets compounded again multiplied by 0.1 again, and now you have $121. And that is how future value and present value work together for the time value of money.